Today on Real Ghost Stories Online, the nurse who was always on duty. She was still going to work even after her death. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. Yes, if you have a real ghost story, share it with us. We'd love to hear it. Call in any time, 855-853-4802. You can write in realghoststoriesonline.com. Then you can also listen without the commercials. You can do that and get advanced episodes and access to the archive. Become a premium subscriber through Apple Podcasts. You can try it three days free. You can also sign up through patreon.com slash real ghost stories or at ghostpodcast.com. And I'm real excited because it's fun to do episodes with my sister, Kathy Gordon and Harper at the same time. Hi. It's fun, right? Yeah. I love you both so much. Thank you. Hey, you know, I'm interested in this nurse thing. And I'm going to tell you the barometer on this for me, how scary it's going to be. Like if she haunts a hospital, I'm afraid. If it's like urgent care strip mall, I'm not quite as afraid. <laughs> school nurse? School nurse. Uh, well, that's a that little creepy. A little I creepy. could see Old school nurse. School, yeah, like that. Nursing home nurse. That, that'd be kind of creepy too. Kind of, yeah, that could be creepy. But there's something about urgent care that just doesn't seem quite as... <laughs> quite as scary, you know, like she could be there, but I'm just not quite as afraid of her. I always say, if you want to get something, go to urgent care. That's right. Because if you don't have something when you came wrong, when you went in, you will when you leave. Absolutely. Well, do you want to hear a story about a nurse haunting someplace? I would love to. Yeah. The nurse haunting the strip mall. Let's do it. Okay. This story is about a woman in black. I used to work in a nursing home in Australia. When I started working there, there was a nurse on staff that suffered from postnatal depression. After one of her shifts ended, she'd gone home and ended her life. Oh, how sad. Oh my God, I can't even imagine. Oh. Oh, so my employment started six months after this event. It was a quiet February evening, coming to the end of summer, I was on night shift. It was just after midnight, and some of my colleagues were telling me the story of the nurse. One of my colleagues, Sandra, turned to me and said, she never left. That's always a creepy thing when you're talking about someone who has passed away. Fun, fun, fun. Thank you for that, because that's exactly the appropriate sound effect. Being young and just starting out, I was like, huh? What do you mean? My colleague said she's still here doing her shifts. The hairs on the back of my neck stood up and it was coming toward the time for our rounds. I didn't think any of the story that maybe they were just trying to freak me out. So we started our rounds, each of us taking a quarter. Now with these quarters, some are dead ends and some will lead to other wings. I started down one when all of a sudden a panic alarm went off. We ran to the patient's room We flicked the light on. Nothing was out of place. And our patient was still in bed under her blankets. When we asked what happened, our patient said, there was a woman in a black dress at the end of my bed. I thought she was lost. As soon as I pressed my call bell to get her some help, she walked out. I don't doubt this patient's testimony one bit. Not only was she a very honest woman, she did not suffer from any dementia or Alzheimer's, But we were all less than 50 meters from our room in order to leave that corridor. The person would have had to walk past either myself or my colleagues. Other events have occurred where panic alarms have gone off in rooms with locked doors where only the nurse in charge had the key. When she led us in to turn it off and investigate, no one was there to have been able to set it off. I went to the chapel on site to check everything was locked up one night. Before I flicked the light on, I saw a figure sitting in a chair. I immediately experienced a heavy feeling in my chest. I flicked the light on and the figure disappeared. I thought it was a figment of my imagination trying to explain it away. The feeling in my chest was still there and was getting heavier. As soon as I walked out of the chapel, it was gone. I finished working there a year or so after. There were many other experiences that I and other staff members had witnessed. I don't believe she was malevolent. She was in pain 
and wanted to finish her shifts. So what do you think of that? I think that totally could happen. Oh, yeah. You know, we were talking recently about uh, theater people who are so into what they do Mm -hmm. that they have, they come back to it or it's where they felt most alive, maybe. Right. You know, so they come back there. Connected, very connected. And so I would think there would be professions like that, like nursing, right? That you're so connected to it that you, you just haven't made the break. You still think you're on duty. And you're still trying to care for people. So I would see that. I don't see college professors doing that. No mm. college professor goes back to the room and wants to continue <laughs> talking about, you know, it's like, let physics. me out. I finally retired. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think, Harper? I agree with Kathy. I do think that, honestly, I think sometimes ghosts don't always think that they died. And she's still wanting to help. I, and yeah. I'm, I'm with you on that. I think sometimes they don't know they're right. dead. Yeah, I, I think that's that's it. And until that happens somehow, until they find that out, you know, the, the best movie for that was The Sixth Sense, where he comes back and he's a he's a therapist. Oh, and don't he give it away, because Harper, it. have you seen? Oh. Have you seen that movie, The Sixth? No. Six, okay. Not it is movie. like the best scary movie ever. Okay. This weekend, because it happened, we're recording this Memorial Weekend. So I know you've got some time, Harper. You need to watch that. And then let's get together and talk about that movie. So if you haven't seen it, really, guys, you've had about 20 years or 25 <laughs> right. years to do it. But um, but there's young people like Harper that haven't seen it. I'm just saying yeah. that. That is similar to this in that somebody had a strong profession that they couldn't leave. So, Harper, are you okay with having a homework assignment over Memorial Weekend? I mean, I know you just got out of school. Yes, I'm very okay okay with having a homework assignment. (laughs) And Harps, I'm telling you, you're going to love it. It's like one of the best movies I've ever seen. It's a really good movie. I used to use it in my class. We'd, We'd use it to, because it was so beautifully done it's really we well would written. cut the scenes apart and talk about how the scenes were put together and stuff and so i just think it's interesting like stories like that and nursing homes too there's a lot of haunted nursing home stories not surprising so this is a little interesting because it was someone who worked there but how we've talked before in fact you and i were just talking this morning kathy about dementia people see like they don't they're not believed that they're seeing someone. They just, oh, it's dementia. Is it dementia or is it paranormal? It could be either way, but we dismiss it as it's it's just the dementia. Yeah. Um, no, I think there was definitely a presence that of this woman who can, I think this is for real. You guys want to hear one more? Let's do it. Harp? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Here's the second one. Hi, I've been listening to your podcast for a while now and decided to share my story with y'all. It does say y'all. Cute. My husband recently, we've got one from Australia and then one from Texas, it (laughs) sounds like. My husband recently traveled to LA for work and stayed in the West Bonaventure Hotel. And while he was gone, we would FaceTime to fall asleep. We would talk a little, turn off the lights, and then just leave FaceTime on with the phones on our nightstands so we could see each other. That sounds weird when I read it, but I swear it's not weird, LOL. The first night he was there, I noticed what looked like small, slightly glowing, small transparent balls moving around his room. There were probably 10 of them. I thought this was weird, but mostly because it's an expensive hotel. And I (laughs) thought maybe housekeeping forgot to dust or something. We turned off the lights to go to sleep, and I noticed that I could still see the balls flying around, but I thought nothing of it and went to sleep. The next night, we started to FaceTime, and I noticed there were a ton of these little flying balls, like 50 or more. They were flying all over, and many of them flew right up to the screen, stayed there for a while, then flew away. This time, I asked my husband if the room was really dusty or if there were bugs or something flying around, and he said no, it was very clean, and he didn't see any bugs. Huh, I thought. This was strange, but whatever. We turned out the lights to go to sleep, and they were very visible, glowing and flying around. I just watched them for several minutes, and I could hear my husband's breathing slow as he fell asleep. I started to drift off, 
When coming from the phone, I heard whispering. Naturally, I thought my husband was messing with me, so I pretended not to hear it, hoping he would give up and maybe I could scare him back. I lay there waiting and listening, but I realized that I could still hear my husband's breathing, almost a snore. At the same time, the whispering was happening. I listened really closely, and I could hear two different voices going back and forth. I couldn't make out what they were saying, but the whispers were getting louder and more urgent, like they were having a heated conversation. There were several glowing balls huddling close to the screen, and this went on for several minutes, the way a conversation would. There were pauses between what I assume were sentences, the voices would get louder and quieter, the inflection would change, and the glowing balls stayed near the screen. It was just so mumbled, I couldn't figure out what they were saying, and the conversation seemed to die down after about 15 minutes. The balls dissipated, and the whispering stopped. I asked my husband when he got home if he was aware of anything going on. I didn't want to scare him while he was there. And he said he slept like a rock, not even waking up to pee. It was so strange to hear him breathing in the background and these voices whispering so close to the phone. About a week after he got home, our roommate and I were talking, and she said she had a weird experience the night before. She said she was woken up by someone yelling, Hey, where's your rings? Right in her ear around 1 a.m. She woke up startled, felt for her engagement ring on her hand. It wasn't there. She never takes this ring off, not even a shower or put lotion on anything. She jumped up turned the lights on, searched frantically around her bed and room for her ring. She even called her fiancé, who lives in Canada, crying because she didn't know what happened. When she was about to give up, she looked at her pillows, most of which she had thrown around in her search, and on the pillow still left on the bed right in the exact center was her ring. It was really strange. We don't know if maybe my husband brought something back with him and it was messing with our roommate or what's going on. That's my story. It would be awesome to get y'all's take on this. Thanks. That's creepy. That is like that, a classic ghost story. That is very creepy, but I feel like I could almost debunk like the first part of the story. Okay, go ahead. With the whispering. Mm-hmm. You know how sometimes in like hotel walls and stuff that they usually, hotel walls are pretty thin, so you can hear conversations from the hallway, from other rooms. It was all. It was probably most likely just like a another room. Yeah, because if it was someone in the next room and they were kind of having a loud conversation, you could same thing. You would hear it, but you wouldn't really hear all the words. You would just hear the mumbling. It would. It would hear. It would almost like sound like whispering, Mm -hmm. almost. But so good point. It could be that possible. Possible on that one. Though we still have the little. Orbs. orbs that are bouncing around. I'm going, uh, you know, my default on these light orbs like that is alien. Oh, I didn't see alien coming. I just feel it like it is an intelligence. Did you see alien coming, Harper? I can honestly see it. I'm not I'm not with the alien I'm like, theory. Dun, I'm not dun, alien. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> like I can feel it, don't you? I'm thinking orbs, like ghostly orbs is what I'm thinking. So you're gonna go with alien. I'm gonna go with ghostly orbs. Okay, you go ghostly. Harper orb. is gonna go with what do you think? Middle. <laughs> middle. <laughs> middle. Could it be alien some ghostly orbs and orbs. some aliens all together? <laughs> or maybe it's just large dust. <laughs> I don't know. It just seemed intelligent. To me, like this intelligence, which I associate a lot of times with some sort of alien. So you're saying ghostly orbs couldn't be intelligent? That's insulting to ghostly, ghostly orbs, orbs everywhere. Okay, I take that back. All right, <laughs> dumb ghostly, ghostly orbs. orbs. Before you all <laughs> get on your high horse here and come at We're me. We're going to get letters. <laughs> oh. <laughs> or hauntings, one or the other. I don't know. I just feel like... Um, and maybe it's my close encounters of the third kind vision because they had, I think they had some of those little orbs yeah. bounce around in that movie. Okay. So, one more question, Harper. Do you think yes. the ghostly orbs slash aliens were connected with the voices, the mumbled voices? Do you think that's no. all connected or do you think that's separate? 
Honestly, I think that's separate. What do you think about the ring story, though? Now, the ring story is creepy. Because she hears, where's your rings? Can't find her rings. And you would tear up the bedroom. Like, oh, my God, where are they? Where are they? And then they're in the center of a pillow. Do you think, as she mentioned in this story, we don't know if maybe my husband brought something back with him and it was messing with our roommate. Is that a possibility? And if so, would it be an alien? <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that And two- why does an alien care about her engagement ring? Exactly. I don't know, but then why does aliens care about anything? Well, in the places they probe, I- I'm just over that. Do you think these two things are connected? I'll, I'll answer that first. I don't think they're connected at all. I think they're separate. Third, I'm, I'm, I agree. I think they're separate I think things. we have two different things happening. I don't think whatever that was in the hotel room would have come home with him, now, especially aliens. You know, I could almost get that the ring came off her finger, and in her kind of unconsciousness, she was like, where's the ring? Yeah. Right? And it maybe it sounded like another voice. And then she's frantically searching for it. Now, that doesn't explain why it's on the middle of the pillow. You know, I could kind of see your dreamlike state. Because you sometimes we kind of have a consciousness yeah. that things are going on, you know, and you actually build them into a dream. Have you ever had that happen? Uh-huh. Absolutely. And so yeah. I'm wondering if, like, somehow she took the, dream, the ring off her finger while she was sleeping or it came off and she realized it was gone. Like, oh, my God, where's my ring? You know. So really, both of these stories, leaning paranormal, not paranormal, leaning alien. (laughs) First one, you're going to go leaning alien. I'm leaning alien on the first one. Harper? Me too. Okay. I'm leaning alien on the first one. I'm leaning paranormal on the first one. Second one, I don't know, could be paranormal, could be a dream thing. But I do think it's weird it ended up in the middle of the pillow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's the part that I can't quite explain. Well, if you'd like the show and you want an ad-free experience, sign up to be a premium subscriber. Do that through applepodcast.com. Try it for three days free. You can sign up through patreon.com slash real ghost stories or at ghostpodcast.com. And for all of us here at Real Ghost Stories Online, thank you so much for listening.